this is the real Tom Rose, and we can solve this problem if we know a couple of uh, kind of interesting, weird things about angles and circles. So first of all, um, well, actually, first of all, first of all, what is this right there? Why does this circle have like a beard on it? <laughs> I think just we should just take a moment and savor the hilarity of this problem. Um, but that aside, uh, if you if you have an an angle inscribed in a circle, the angle of so you if you if you have an angle inscribed in a circle, you take the same endpoints of that angle, but instead you go from the radius. The 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 measure of the new angle is twice the measure of the original angle. Right, so they told us C has a measure of one radian. Well, that must mean that, let's call this one x. x has a measure of two radians. Okay, that's something you just have to memorize and know. So inscribed angles are half of radius angle, of angles that come from the center. Now, um, first of all, what, is a, what does a radian mean? So when you measure an angle in radians, you're, what you're actually measuring is um, the the length of the circumference. It's, a help, it's kind of a helpful thing in this situation to know about what a radian is. So when they t when you say this line or this arc x is two radians, what you're saying is the length of that arc is equivalent to two times the radius of the circle. So when we say two radians, what we actually mean is the length of the arc is two r. That's the definition of radian. So knowing that, if we knew the radius, we could come up with the answer. They tell us the diameter is 10, and the diameter, of course, is equal to 2r. So um, the radius equals 5. So 2 times r is 2 times 5, which equals 10. So the answer to this is actually, at the end of the day, 10. It's just the same as the diameter, it turns out. 